death. Good vibration. This is our Wednesday night handling number 278. Let's have the quiet time before we start. As we relax the body, let us quiet the mind and bring our full attention to this point of consciousness, to this moment, and be here now. See this circle as a circle of light that's getting brighter and brighter. And let us fill the center to overflowing with God's divine love and welcome those from other dimension that we call the balcony people. And let's send God's love into the contact tonight. Remember that each one here is as much a part of the channel as the one who speaks. Thank you, Father. I always get uh, information whenever I send love or get a little still. And uh, Rick said last week was not very... I don't think it was that way, though, but maybe it was before. Moving around a lot of everything. So I'll leave you and... Uh, let the teachers talk to you. Good evening, my dear ones. This is Gadan. This is a beautiful group and a beautiful place to be in your consciousness. I tell you, that is where we truly all are in our consciousness. Tonight's class is a beautiful class, and it's very important. You might call it a basic class, but it's very important to keep your balance. So our class tonight is on balance. Whenever you think of balance, you uh, might think of the high wire walker keeping his balance as he walks across the wire many feet above the ground. When you're walking this plane on this path and this incarnation, it is very valuable to your growth to keep your balance. And with many things happening on your planet at this time, it is easy to be knocked out of balance or to allow yourself to become out of balance, I should say. When we have had other classes on balance, we talked about order, harmony, rhythm, and balance. This is the ingredients of music. In all your music, you have these four ingredients order, harmony, rhythm, and balance. This is also the ingredients that life is made of. I tell you, when you stop to think about yourself and about life as a whole, you can see that they all four work together. As you move through your physical experiences, if you can keep your balance and learn to be at peace within yourself, then can you make progress on your soul's growth on the path that leads to the kingdom of God. I would like to paint you a picture this evening of a larger framework than maybe you are used to. I want you to think of yourself 
is not just this physical body, not the mind, but a multi-dimensional being, as Donald teaches in his classes. You are many dimensions. Since you have left the Father's house and his consciousness, you have dropped down through many, many dimensions. And when you reached a certain level, you started manifesting in bodies of some vibratory rate. The physical body that you have now is the lowest in your bodies. But there are several body, several dimensions of yourself above the physical that you manifest in bodies. Or at least you have a form to see. When you study your meditation class, you talked about the chakras in the different centers, and you went into seven or nine different centers of vortexes of power that the life force flows through into your being. This, they relate to these other dimensions. I'd like for you to see these other dimensions of yourself and your mind. Realize that we are communicating right now on all these dimensions, and the physical is the least in real communication. As you have been told, the language is a great barrier to real communication because it is riddled with the concept of duality and illusion. As you move upward in consciousness, you get a better sight of what life is more about. And moving even higher, you can see more of what you have been leaving out I tell you, when you are just manifesting on the physical plane without any spiritual understanding, those are the masses on your plane. It is less than 2% of life. You who have come to these groups and who have gone to classes have re-educated yourself and moved higher in consciousness and are manifesting much more than the 2%. When you stop to think of this, how much of life you are leaving out, how much of life that you are not aware of, consciously aware of, that is. You are aware of them on other dimensions, but you, your conscious awareness is here on this physical dimension embedded in this physical shell unless you go into deep meditation or your hypnosis and move out of your physical and become aware of the higher dimensions, of other dimensions than the physical. When you are out of balance, these finer bodies that you do not see with your physical eye are out of alignment. And as you have learned, everything comes from above down. In other words, it comes from the highest source that we could call the Godhead. And the life force flows through all these many dimensions of yourself. And when they are out of alignment, then the life force cannot get through, excuse me, cannot get through as well. You are always receiving life force and always will because you are an eternal being and cannot be destroyed. There is no death. There is change. And when you leave the physical body, 
you are immediately manifesting on another dimension according to your level of consciousness. When you see this and understand that you have the ability to work through much more of yourself than you have in the past, then it is well worth it to move into that higher consciousness. It is well worth it to move above and beyond the physical and understand the higher parts of life. The physical is just the outer husk of life, my dear ones. And to be satisfied with just the physical shell and the physical life as you find it is to settle for very little of what life is really all about. When you look through just 2% of yourself, think how much more there is to experience, how much more of yourself and of life that you're missing out on. When we speak to you from these realms of love and light, and we have gone through the experiences that you're going through and have had most of the experiences that all of you on your dimension have had and are going through, we know that it is difficult for you to release more of the physical and move in to the higher realms of understanding. To live in the outer world only is to miss the mark. When you realize that all the other higher dimensions are within, then it becomes confusing because you are conditioned and programmed to believe in time and space. That is a part of the duality concept and there is no time or space. There is life, period. And life with a capital L is another word for God. Life is everywhere present. God is everywhere present. God is love. And so divine love is everywhere present. Everything that is, is created out of divine love. You are created from divine love. And as you go through this play on this stage called the physical plane, when you remember who you are, when you make the decision that you want to have more experience, that you want to have more of life, then you can. This is the great message that we bring to you from these higher dimensions. My dear ones, you are so programmed to believe in limitation that it is difficult for you to be motivated enough to move out of your physical ruts and to move in to the higher consciousness. I am not scolding you for you have done well. Some of you have gone faster and farther than others and some of you have lingered behind and allowed some experiences to hold you back. I tell you when that you can learn to be grateful in all things, even the so-called negative experiences that you call bad, 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 then can you bring about a balance within yourself for you know who you are. When you know 
that you are a child of life, that you are made in the image and likeness of the Creator, that in true reality you are God's. You are God's unrealized. As you begin to understand this and begin to live it, then do you move your conscious awareness upward or inward, we should say, because it is within and not without, but upward in frequency to higher levels of understanding that gives you a view of life that you do not see from the surface conscious physical level. You've been told this many, many times, and it is uh, maybe old hat to some of you, but I say to you, how are you doing with what you have been told? It is one thing to come to a class like this and hear some truth, or come to a structured class and do your lessons. It is another thing to start living the truth that you hear. When you begin to live it and have conscious control of your thoughts, then you are the master of yourself and the master of your dominion and your life and the whole universe. Then you are in perfect alignment with the universe and with yourself. Many on your plane would be very surprised to hear that the whole universe is within you because they think of time and space. And when you begin to truly learn to go within consciously aware of the inner dimensions, then do you become more of the master of this dimension, and then you can move to another dimension that is much higher and much more beautiful. There is much to be said about balance. When you think negative thoughts, you can see how you throw yourself out of balance. And now that you, some of you have become much more consciously aware, self-aware, you are aware when you do this almost instantly, and you have the tools of sending God's love into yourself and to the situation and allowing yourself to bring yourself back into alignment with the laws of the universe, with the flow of life instead of against the current. When you allow fear to interfere in any way, you are going against the current of life. You cannot hurt life but you can, you might say, hurt yourself in a way that because you're holding yourself back and living in illusion, anything that is fear, and fear wears many, many faces, is illusion, is unreal. The reality of life is not very present on your physical plane, except in the consciousness of those who ha are learning and are bringing more light of understanding into what life is truly all about. There has been many times and many stories where 
someone said, if you could ask a question and get the answer, what would you ask? And many times, individuals that say, what's the purpose of life? What do you think the purpose of life is? This is something that would be well to think of. And what is your purpose in life, in this incarnation, from where you are manifesting at this moment? Some never think of things such as this, and it it gives, it holds them back because they are just marantering through the incarnation trying to coast when they cannot coast because you're either going up or down, you're either going forward or backward in your soul's growth. And they are just getting by. It is when we look at your plane and see those who are moving forward in their soul's growth and see the masses, the great majority, that are not moving forward and most and some are doing great uh, harm to their karmic indebted, as you might say, and getting in deeper and deeper. When you see your news, you might begin to understand a little more when you see so many people murdered. I tell you, nothing ever happens by chance. There is a reason and purpose behind everything. And you see some of your friends or acquaintances, or you hear of some of the famous people who have cancer or some other disease and graduate from this plane early. I tell you, there's always a purpose for this. When an individual is, has stopped growing and they are going backward, it is sometimes much better to bring them home, or should I say bring them to the home on other dimensions in between incarnations so that they can add up the score and see life in a much clearer way and bring about a greater understanding when you realize, my dear ones, there is no death, this eliminates really all of fear. All of your fears are traceable to the fear of death, our fear of lack. Death is the lack of life in your concepts, but there is no lack of life because life is everywhere present and you cannot be destroyed. You cannot be discontinued because you are an eternal spiritual being and always will exist. It is your choice as to what level that you exist on. You have chosen to exist on the level that you are on now. How did you choose this? Well, maybe some have come from another planet or from another experience and they decided that the earth plane would be a good growing experience and so they chose to incarnate. The great majority, the masses, have chosen through what you call karma and this means their past experiences have held them back and held them down to this physical plane. There are many, many who come into this 
embodiment on your physical level time after time and get in a little deeper in their karmic indebtedness or maybe just break even or make a little progress and then the next time they go backward a lot more some a very few get their freedom from this dimension you in circles like this have a great opportunity to have the freedom from this lower levels where life is less than 2%. I say it in this way to help you to understand how much more there is to life. And what does this all have to do with balance? I tell you, it has a lot to do with balance. As you learn to keep your balance, when you keep when you take care of your physical body, when you keep your thoughts in a positive, constructive, and loving way, and when you make contact with the spiritual being that you are, the God within you, throughout the day, not once or twice a year, but throughout the day, then are you keeping your balance and as you keep your balance, this keeps your thoughts in the place where you can move forward, where you can make great strides. I tell you, the higher that you go in consciousness, the easier it is to move higher. And the lower that you go, the easier it is to go lower. I think if you start to think that you can see this, and when you lose some of your higher vibrations and let yourself slip backward, you know it, especially those who have made some strides forward. You feel it. And that is the time to stop whatever you're doing and get back your balance get your physical body in good order, get your thinking in good order, and make that contact with the spiritual being, the God within you, and keep that alive. For that is your true nature, my dear ones. That spiritual being, the God within you, is the reality of your being. There's nothing more important than how you are with God. How often do you talk to God? How often do you think of yourself as a God being? To most on this dimension, this would be slanderous. This would be against the laws of life. But I tell you it is not. Most on your plane are followers. And they follow the Pied Piper into whatever religion and creed that they are subjected to. And now in the younger generations they are breaking away. Even though they are indoctrinated as a child, many of them are breaking away from the old beliefs and moving in to a greater understanding. There is a revolution, a spiritual revolution, going on on your planet right now. The opposite is true also, as you can hear in your news. You hear the bad news, as you think of bad and good and your duality concepts, you do not hear how many have raised their consciousness and see life in a much brighter and more beautiful way and understand what all the chaos is about on your planet. 
I tell you it is not bad, for there is no good or evil. There is life. There is God. You are life. You are God. When you break away from the belief in the duality concept, when you understand that this is just a play on a stage, when you allow yourself to make that contact with that spiritual being that you are, not just once a day, but at least three times a day, and maybe more, and when you learn, my dear ones, to make contact with that spiritual being that you are and keep it alive as you go through your day, no matter what you are doing, no matter what is happening around you, then you become the master. Then you see through the duality. Then you see the true reality of life, not what appears to be. Your master teacher said, judge not by appearances, but judge righteous judgment. Righteous means the right usefulness of the law, the eternal law, not physical laws, but the eternal laws of life. And when you look at this physical plane and see the chaos that some people see and all the tragedies so forth, so called, you realize that this is just experiences that these individuals need for their next step towards their soul's growth. To most this would sound outlandish. It would sound untrue. But when you see it from the higher dimension, you see that it is true. And if you can keep your balance as you go through your day by keeping your physical, your mental, and your spiritual selves in alignment with all the dimensions of your being, then can you be the master? Nothing is more important, my dear ones, than how you are with God. This means that nothing is more important than you realize who you truly are, that you see through the illusions of this plane, that you realize that you're just playing a role and that it is not really real. It is just a role and that you have played many other roles and you may play other roles. But when you get caught up in the play and take it too serious and are greatly disturbed about what is happening or not happening in your world, then are you in the mire of illusion. Keeping the balance through understanding, understanding, my dear ones, is the ingredients of that foundation on which you stand that can hold you up under any and all experiences, no matter how dire or grave they may look. True understanding of the universal laws of life. This is what we mean when we say understanding, not physical facts, for they're continually changing. The universal laws never change. They are constant. You can depend on them. You can stand on them and they hold you up. Your master teacher also said, trust not in the arm of flesh. And this is what he meant. Trust not in the illusions of this physical world, for it is just like going to a movie. You know that it's a movie and you are going to escape for a while from your play that you're playing on this stage and play some other roles with your inner image that you see on the screen. But when you leave the movie, you know that it's just a, a play or a movie. 
if you can look at this that you're going through now in your physical shell and realize that it is the same, there is no difference except that it is more continuous and that it lasts a lot longer. And what you do with your thoughts about your experiences makes your future what it is. I feel that it is time for me to allow you to uh, make conversation and ask questions or make comments as you will. Are there any thoughts this evening that you would express? Could the uh, raising of the uh, of the Christ consciousness in the overall population, could that be maybe considered the second coming of Christ, so called? Let us um, uh, say this in a different way. You are involved with you and the God within you and no one else. This is another thing that is difficult for you to conceive because you feel that you're involved with these individuals around you, the ones you work with, the ones that you have to pay your mortgage to. But I tell you, it is not true. You're involved with your thoughts about them and about it. So, let's get back to your question. The second coming is raising your consciousness to the Christ level as your master teacher called Jesus did when he was in the physical. And he demonstrated that it can happen. His whole life was a pattern for you to go by Does this make sense to you? Yeah. You see, when you say raising the Christ consciousness of the masses, uh, the masses will do what they will do. You have no dominion over others. You only have dominion over yourself. Now, when you can demonstrate that real dominion over yourself, then you can manifest physical things in a second, or you can, uh, like the master teacher did, multiply the fish and loaves and feed the multitudes, or many other things that he did to show you what is possible for you. His time on this physical plane and the incarnation called Jesus is greatly misunderstood. But he said clearly to the disciples, and what he said to them, he meant for everyone, ye shall do the things that I do and even greater. And so your experience of the Christ consciousness is waiting for you to move into it. And I tell you, it is an experience great, greatly beyond your comprehension. Are there other thoughts or questions this evening? And there is only one true power, and that is the power of God the Father. There's only one life in the whole of life, and that all power, all uh, manifestations, everything that is, comes from that one source. When you want a better life, when you want a raise, when you want uh, a new car, whatever, or just peace of mind, where do you go for it? I tell you, if you go to that one source, that is where it all comes from. 
not from your boss, not from winning the lottery, not from any other place. It comes from the God within you. And you have dominion in that area when you can realize it. Did this answer your question? Yes, it is us to allow that life to live within us. It is up to you to come to the place in consciousness where you realize it. Realization means to make it real, to make it happen, to come to the place where the master teacher came when he was baptized by John the Baptist and then he spent three years in his ministry. His vibratory rate was so high that it took many generations to prepare a body for him and these, this group called the Essenes uh, did this for his coming and prepared this one uh, and kept the line pure down through many generations. But even then, he could only stay in the body for 33 years, for the vibrations were too high. And if it hadn't been in such a great balance and alignment as it was kept down through the many generations, the higher vibrations would have shook it apart and he could not have stayed in the body that long. This fits in with our class tonight on balance. Are there other thoughts or questions this evening? Maybe this isn't exactly facting on the topic, but I was wondering, I know that we come into the physical life to play many roles. Why do some come into this life um, as uh, uh, Siamese twins? Each individual is an individual experience. You cannot have a standard answer for this, my dear one, for there is no standard answers for these things. They come for the experience, and maybe it is paying off some karmic debt. Each one is different. This does not happen very often, but these two entities agreed to come in under these conditions before they were born for some reason and each it, each time this has happened it has been a different reason I know this does not give you much of an understanding of what you have asked and it seems to be this happens also in animals too does it not yeah so <clears throat> it is uh, two cells two uh, uh, what is the word when the uh, in, when they fertilize the egg uh, coming together at the same time and like twins but they have joined their bodies together this is not a coincidence or an accident there is no such thing as coincidence or accidents. This has a reason and purpose behind it. And unless it is their teachers or higher beings, it is, is only known by those individuals and usually not known until they get back to the other dimensions what the reason and purpose was for it. In this recent incident that you have heard in your news I cannot say 
what was the true reason for this happening. But let us look at what happened. One entity laid down their life for the other one, did they not? Yeah. <clears throat> Do you remember the Master Teacher says, no greater love have a man that he lay down his life for another? Yeah. This is a statement that he made. And so this entity agreed to miss the opportunities of incarnating for the other. But this statement also has a greater meaning. When you say, lay down your life for another, we could say that it does not mean death, as you think of death. It could mean giving your life in service to others rather than serving just yourself. Can you comprehend this? Yes, so that you would mean that, uh, by that you mean that someone would uh, come here in the physical to help someone else that is coming into the physical. Yes, yeah. or many others. They serve others instead of just serving themselves. What their motive for being um, one of your examples is the, uh, I cannot bring Donald's thoughts into her name, but uh, she had a heart attack recently, an older woman. Teresa? Yes. Now, she has laid down her life for many others, has she not? Yes. And served, gave her life that others may live and have the opportunities to live instead of die of starvation. This is a good example, but there are many, many others. And in your lives, maybe you have done the same, or it has been done for you. Are there other thoughts or questions this evening? On the thunder dome, um, Lord, at what point does an entity decide to enter? Is it at the point of conception or the, the point of birth? This is a great argument in your uh, planet in these days because of what you call abortions. From our point of view, it would be very foolish for one to enter the body at conception. For there are many things that could go wrong. Uh, when the female becomes impregnated, there is a time when decisions are made about who will take the body, who will have the opportunity to incarnate and when the decision is made, then that entity moves in to the family or with the female and helps to give life to this extra body within her. This is why so many uh, women who are pregnant have such a glow about them because that extra entity is with them and helping to give life to them and to build the body. Most always, the entity enters the body at birth or even after birth, maybe for several weeks or a month or more. And then it gradually enters the body I want you to think about this for a little while and think about death. You see, what most people think about death is really the opposite. When you leave this physical plane, if you leave under good conditions, then you move into a higher dimension, much higher than the physical, 
and a much more beautiful place to exist. But think about being born into the physical plane. You leave those beautiful existence to come into and be encased in this small physical shell where before you had the whole universe to roam in. Not everyone that, for, that this is true, but for those who have a greater understanding of life, this is true. So you see, as one of your teachers said, I think it was Elwa, if you want to cry about somebody dying, you really should cry about those who are being born or feel sad. <laughs> yes. But they desire growth, and this is a way that it has happened for a long time in your uh, experience of life that the reincarnational cycle was set up in birth and rebirth. And your Edgar Casey prophet made the statement that the average time between incarnations was 500 years, but it can be everything is different and ex uh, different. We said the quickest one was six seconds. So when you think of this, you're thinking in terms of time. And from our dimension, we do not think in time. Time has meaning only in soul's growth. If you incarnate in 10 or 20 lifetimes and make no progress in your soul's growth, this has no meaning. But if you move forward, then you have moved into a better place of consciousness. All reality is consciousness, my dear ones. Are there any thoughts or other thoughts or questions? I had a little experience happen to me that turned into be, uh, a, a mini awakening, I guess. I was uh, trying to make a, a, put a bow on a gift, and I tried a bunch of times. I didn't have a clear methyl image, uh, so I paused, I stopped, and I, I formed a clear mental image of what I wanted it to look like, and it was much easier to bring it into the physical and in the both form. Yes. You see, you, it hadn't been manifested on the other dimensions. Everything comes from above down and has to be completed on the other dimensions before it can be manifested in the physical. You do not build a high-rise building unless you have a good architect that has all the details on paper. That is manifesting it on other dimensions. See, in the mind, in the mental realms. And this is what you did. You sit down and pictured this as you would have it to be. Then it was much easier for you to manifest it and bring your rhythm into the form that you wanted it to be. This is a great lesson, and it has to do with creation. You are constantly creating your life as it is, and you're creating it with your thoughts. Thought is a creative force. And so, without thinking, you attempted to manifest this bow. But then, when you stopped, and brought it forth on other dimensions, then it was easy to bring it down into the physical. So this is a lesson for you when you want something in your physical plane, when you want even peace of mind or whatever you want. It has to come from the other dimensions. It has to be manifested on the other dimensions first.
the higher dimensions, then it comes down and can be manifested on the physical. It cannot be manifest on the physical unless it is manifest on the higher dimensions. This has to do a great deal with your life and keeping your balance gives you a greater opportunity to manifest what you want on the mental and spiritual levels and then bring it down into the physical. And what comes in here is belief. Sometimes you want something but you don't believe that you deserve it or that you can manifest it. And that belief has to come forth that it can be true on the physical before you can manifest it on the other dimensions. And I tell you, all things are possible to those who can believe. Vincent. Are there other thoughts or questions this evening? It has been a very interesting class and a, and a warm and beautiful gathering this evening in your circle of life. There are many, many on the other dimensions uh, who are with you this evening and listening to the lessons. And I would like to tell you something that I don't think you have been told, that many times after your class ends, another class begins on those who gather from other dimensions with higher teachers. And the conversations, the subject matter that we talk about in the physical language is taught in thought form and is much more complete. And so by you coming together brings these higher teachers down to these lower levels and not only gives you opportunity to hear the truth in your language, but it gives many, many others opportunity to comprehend it in thought form that is not limited by your verbal language that is riddled with the illusion and the concepts of duality. I am very grateful to have had this opportunity to spend with you this evening, and I send you God's love, and I bless you with God's blessings, for he has blessed us all in giving us life. Good evening. Good evening. Well, we get more uh, conversation in a smaller group with uh, Kadan and some of the teachers. Oh, from you guys. Yes. That was from really the guy. After a while. Yeah. Uh, the six six second turnaround. I've never heard that before. Uh, the what? Uh, the second of the three incarnations. Yeah, but she has.